This is the future. We say welcome back to another episode of Two Dimes and a Token. I am one of your hosts today, Brooke Nasty. To my right, you know what time it is. It's Kanyezy. That's how we do. And we got two new guests with us, two new hosts, excuse me. We have the Nichols. They're here. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? My name is Dreyer. My name is Mikey. I, once again, I thought he was going to say Mick Dizzle. Mick Dizzle. Is that right? Is that right? Mick Dizzle. I'm, I'm not mad about you don't that. like Mick Dizzle? Nah, man. I'm sticking with okay. Mikey. I, I, feel that. That. I like that. I, feel I like that. that. Okay. That's fantastic. Well, in this episode, we got a special treat for you. Make this a little bit quick, right? We're going to do this a little bit quick. It's the Native Boys. The Native Boys. The Native, the native, native boys, boys, man. Uh, so we had a great introduction to a gentleman when we were at BKFC down in Hollywood, Florida. Um, and he got us linked up with the Native Boys, which you can find on Instagram. Um, they do a bunch of different events, a bunch of different things across the board. But they had um, an event that they were doing down at, uh, down at a ranch over in Haines City. Haines City. Right? And uh, they were actually doing a program, a weekend-long program, where they were helping uh, handicapped kids or uh, disabled children learn how to hunt hogs. Yeah, hunt hog, fish, everything outdoors. They do more than just hunt hogs, but that's one of the most things that, I mean, big things that they do. Yes, that was, the, in this particular event, I think that was the focus, but he's 100% right. They teach them how to live off the land, do everything as if the way that we should be doing it. Right? Yes. Um, and I got to tell you, just from personal perspective, sitting down with, with, there was quite a few gentlemen that we sat down with. Um, they were pristine, absolutely amazing individuals unbelievably respectful i can tell you i look up to them as uh as parents as fathers because their kids were some of the most respectful people i have ever encountered in my life they were very helpful they wanted they wanted to get involved in everything and they were just like hey how can i help you yes sir yes ma'am no sir no ma'am like it was just it was incredible that's incredible yes they're those, disciplined i gotta i gotta give you guys a shout out for whoever is watching over at the native boys you guys uh blew us away with your courtesy, with your decency, with just with the way you treated us and everything. And your, hosp us your hospitality, everything about Thank it. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Nice job. So um, now to my right, I think we have a couple questions. How would you guys like to learn how to hog hunt? That would be yeah? amazing. Yeah. It would be yep. amazing? What, what do you think yep. would be the coolest thing about going out and spending a weekend with the native boys? The coolest thing would be me, me. Maybe like shooting a hog, maybe right. Oh, there. no, you're not shooting big dog. You're getting down there and you're stabbing it. You got to get oh, down with the. Oh, that would be more. Get down with the get hunting. down. You got to run out there with the dogs. They have hunting dogs. Yeah. I'm, I, we're going to show you all those snippets of what they do out there. I, I hope that you are inspired. I hope that you feel the need to go outside and be a part of culture, be a part of the society that you live in. Understand that this is how we were raised. This is how the country people, and I feel like we're all country at heart, live. So yeah. that being said, I, I want you guys to tune in. It's some keen things out there. Thor yes. is amazing. And I'm not talking about the Thor's on, on your shoulder. Yeah. But Thor is amazing. And these guys are real cowboys. They really are. Through and through. They really are. The one thing I am going to make fun of Kanyezy, he made a lot of Yellowstone references in this podcast. Yeah. I it mean, was it, funny. It was funny in the moment. Yeah. But, uh, hey, but before we get to the episode, we need to tell everybody. Man, the, the only way that this podcast is even possible, we got to give a huge shout out to our, our main sponsor, number one, Death Grip Wax, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Death Grip yeah. Wax, right, Mikey? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, death, yeah, exactly. There you go. Death, Death Grip Wax is a leading edge company for your facial hair, right? The mustache needs that you have. When you want to walk into a bar and you want to feel like you're the sexiest man that's walking in, you want to say, hey, I'm distinguished, bro. This is what I do. This is where I live. You ever heard the word regal? You ever heard the word king? You ever heard the word prince? This is what I need in order to put, take my face from the six to the ten to make sure when I walk in, everybody, everybody head turn. All right. They say, wow, hey, that man know how to do style, right? Death Grip Wax has the leading edge wax for your mustache. You can create any design that you want. They are champions upon champions upon champions at the Beard and Mustache National Competition in Daytona Beach this past year. And across worlds, which I'm pretty sure is going to be in Germany, I think. I may be wrong on that. But in worlds, they're going to take more championships. Exactly. I mean, you just win it with the smell. To exactly. Me. With the smell alone. And on top of the smell, right, they also have amazing, amazing beard oils. They also have great utensils. They give you a nice little satchel that you can that is delivered with the products. And it gives you that real regal feel. It's like, hey, hey, Sherlock Holmes who? Like, this is what I do. This is me. This, this is, is me. me, baby. I'm, like, a, I'm mystery now. That's what I'm saying. Like, listen, I don't, I don't ride, I don't, I don't drive trucks to work anymore. I take horse and carriage. 
Like I'm regal, baby. This is a, it gives you that nice gentleman feel. Classic. Exactly. So if you guys are looking to shop some Death Grip Wax, you can uh, go to deathgripwax.com or click the promo code below in the link and use the promo code, all caps. Two dimes and a token. That's right, all caps, two dimes in a token. Get 20% off, your, off your entire purchase. That's right, if you order five years worth of Death Grip Wax to make sure that you're sexy as shit for the next 10, you get 20% off the entire purchase. And once again, before we do finish that, I want to give another huge shout out to Levi and everyone over at Death Grip Wax. Such an amazing culture. They create an amazing brotherhood. The moment you make the purchase, not only do you invest into your facial hair needs. That's right. I said needs. Not wants. I said needs. But you're also getting involved in a brotherhood of gentlemen that truly treat each other with massive amounts of respect and support each other, nation and worldwide. All right. Uh, so I think without further ado, uh, we're going to get into the episode. One more thing we do got to tell everybody to do. Like and, like and subscribe. Like. That's right, though. What Don't forget up, though? to hit that. Now, before we conclude that, I want to say one last thing. Here we go. At the end of this, make sure you tune in to the end because it's going to be something yes. that's, that's heartwarming that I feel like everybody needs to see. Thank you. You're right. You're right. I almost, I almost forgot about that one. Um, at the end of the episode, we had a couple, a couple youngins that, uh, that hopped on the podcast. They were uh, sons of some of the gentlemen that sat with us, and uh, they, were, they, were, they kind of stole the show a little bit. They made, they made some of these hardened, grown men tear up a little bit, you know, behind scenes. We can't say who. That's why we didn't drop no names right now. No name drop. Can't say who. But uh, let's be honest, they, they were absolutely fantastic, and they were, they were great to have on the pod, and you asked them great questions. Of course, of course. Those, those kids are adorable, and it's the reason why we have ours here. Exactly. Let you know, hey, yep. it's all about passing the mantle. Yeah. Whether, whatever that mantle looks like to you, be a leader. Exactly. So before we get into it, like we said, <laughs> like and subscribe. Make sure you guys follow on IG, follow on the Tic Tacs. Follow. TikTok. It's not Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs. All right, TikTok. There you go. Look, <laughs> look at Mikey. All right, make sure you guys subscribe on Twitter. Make sure you guys go follow on Facebook, the whole shebang. And without further ado, please enjoy the native voice. Peace. 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 All right, guys. We just this is how we get going. Tell me, we're here with Gene Smith, Tommy with, Elmer, and we're at we are at the Creek Legacy Ranch on Hatchner Hall Road, uh, about a 1,200-acre private-owned ranch here uh, in in Central Florida, right here on the shores of Lake Hatchner Hall. Uh, we're with South Central Florida Kids Outdoors. We're a 501c3 that focuses on uh, terminally ill, handicapped kids taking them in the outdoors, outdoor experience, and uh, using that to introduce them to Jesus Christ through the outdoors. So it's, it's religious-based, but at the same time, you're teaching them the core of protection as well as hunting. It's, how long have you guys been doing this? This is our eighth year doing it here in uh, Central Florida. Um, we're actually, there's seven chapters throughout the United States, um, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Louisiana, Gulf Coast, and a few others um, I'd have to look, but... Uh, we're, we're one of the chapters out of seven, but we do hunts throughout the Southeast United States for these kids. And a lot of, we do an annual event, which is what we just got done with yesterday was the annual hog hunt, which is our kind of big event for the year. And then um, in, in addition to that, we do life hunts with kids. So if a kid like has a dream of going and taking a large whitetail or whatever, and they're from here and they qualify, um, we will pay for their trip. We'll send them up there, get them set up on a big ranch or big place up there. And we've sent a lot of kids out of Florida up there to kill a lot of big deer. Um, turkeys, uh, we do gator hunts, we do hog hunts, we do duck hunts, dove hunts, fishing. I mean, just anything you can do in outdoors. We've been sending a lot of kids um, with autism that don't do as well with the hunting side of this. Um, they really like the dolphin adventure um, down in South Florida where they can go down there and swim with the dolphins. We've been sending a bunch of kids down there to do that. What are the age groups that you guys generally work with? We typically focus on uh, age of six being kind of the youngest, you know, and then we don't, it's, it's supposed to be 18, but we have a lot of kids with mental handicaps that, um, you know, they, they may be 27, 28 years old, but if they had the mentality of a child, 
we're in. We'll take them. Is it only just disabled kids, or do you work, work with you know, normal kids as well? Um, so normal kids are involved as well. Our kids are involved in this heavily, obviously. Um, a lot of the volunteers and guides and stuff here, their kids are involved. But, no, that is our number one focus is, is, is disabled kids. Tell um, me, how, how did this come about eight years ago? Tell me how it started. So this started 13 years ago in Alabama with a lady named Rick and Carol Clark. Um, Rick and Carol, um, they're, they're an older couple. They were kind of retired and, um, you know, kind of just looking for something to do. Always loved hunting, loved kids. They had a kid with Down syndrome at their church that, um, that was interested in hunting, and they took him. And it kind of all grew from there 13 years ago for them. And then a local guy here, a buddy of mine, um, had went up there and attended one of their deer hunting events and, and had asked about, you know, bringing a chapter down here. So I got asked by kind of a friend of a friend. And uh, the way we used to do it, instead of doing it on one ranch, we kind of did it on a bunch of different places and took kids kind of all over the state. Well, um, that, the way it worked out that year, we had some people cancel, couldn't take kids, and we wound up with a pretty large group of kids that didn't have a place to go. And I got the call, hey, we know you hog hunt a bunch. Would you be interested in taking some kids? Absolutely, send them to us. We'll figure it out. We had no idea what we were stepping into. We really didn't. I mean, it was kind of one of them things. We just felt like it was the right thing to do, and we stepped in, and uh, we wound up with 16 kids that year. And uh, we did what we do, man. I mean, we, we hunt and, and work and play out here on these ranches all over Central Florida, and we, we got the side-by-sides and the buggies gathered up and dogs, and I said, hey, let's go catch some hogs with these kids. And, you know, later on that day, 16 kids killed hogs, and, and it was a life-changing experience for a lot of these guys that I run with. and. And a lot of these guys that I know and love, and, you know, a lot of these guys are like brothers to me. And uh, I've seen it change their lives. I've seen it change their kids' lives. I've seen it change their, their spouse's life. And, I mean, I've seen a bunch of lives get changed and touched by just interacting with these kids. So, tell me, now, in the beginning of the day, are the kids, like, nervous and going through, you know? Absolutely. All your, the first then, thing they do when they get here is they start telling us what they can't do. Um, and that's, look, in their mind, there, there's a lot of boxes that are checked off on stuff they don't ever think they'll have the opportunity to do. And you don't really think about that, but when you really look at, you know, their disabilities and, and, and what they've been through in their life, it's, there's a lot of stuff that we take for granted that they just, like I said, have checked off in their mind, like I'm never going to be able to do that. So when you tell them, you know, their parents tell them a month in advance, hey, we're going to go to Florida, ride a swamp buggy, you're going to kill a hog, you're going to catch fish, you're going to do this, do that. And they're like, I, I can't do any of that. And then they get here, and, and, you know, when we meet them and greet them, like the first thing I tell them is like, look, man, we're going to do anything you're willing to try. We, we got it figured out. We're going to keep you safe. But anything you're willing to try today, you're going to do. We get in there and you don't want to kill a hog, then, then we'll back up. We'll, we'll tie the hog up. We catch them alive. And uh, we'll tie them up. We'll throw them in the trailer and, you know, put them in a pen, turn them loose somewhere else, whatever. But if you get in there and you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. This, this whole event is all about being adaptive to these kids. Whatever they want to do, whatever we have to do to make it happen for them, that's what we do. So what is that now? Tell me, after you're done, once you catch the hog, what do they do with the hog? So they get loaded up on a buggy with a, we got a full crew. The way we kind of set it up, we have a, we have a dog hunt group. We have a still hunt group. Um, we have a transportation group. We have a safety group. We have a food service type group, and we have a skin and rack group. And all these individual groups, we have supervisors for each individual area. And that person kind of leads and takes care of that area and that side of the hunt. Um, once they kill their hogs, they get loaded up with the transportation guys. They go to the skin and rack. We got a full group of guys over there to skin and rack that's ready to go. They, they process their animal. They get to learn to process their animal. It gets cut up, put in a cooler. We have uh, game processors or meat processors, butchers set up that they can take their game to, and, and these kids put food on their table. So they get a chance to actually eat what they hunt. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I mean from the field to the table. It's how it's always been. That's how we grew up doing. But what? No, to me, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm okay with it. Listen, I, I'm, a, I'm a city boy, but I live in the country. No, don't get it twisted. I feel like everyone has country inside them. It's just you adapt to your surroundings more so than anything else. Now, how do you guys tie in religion with this? So, the, like I said, the whole point of this, I mean, I told the kids yesterday, I said, look, we played a trick on you guys. We told you I was coming to catch some hogs at lunchtime. I said, but you're here to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. So we got a, we got a pastor here, and he shares it with them, and uh, – and, and look, man, I, I think a lot of people really get it wrong with religion. They think religion's going to church every Sunday and, and you know, amen, brother, and all this and that. And, and really the, the true, at the end of the day, the, the end of the line, the true religion is, is just loving others as you love yourself. That was the number one commandment that Jesus gave us. So in bringing these kids here and doing what we do, that's, that's what we're showing them. We're showing them how to unconditionally love somebody you don't even know. The minute they get here, these kids are loved, and the whole time they're here. And they see that from everybody at this event. 
every single person here shows them the love of Jesus Christ. How long does the event only last? <clears throat> this is all day. Them kids show up at 5.30 uh, on Saturday morning. They didn't leave here until, what, 7.30 last night, 8 o'clock? How often do you guys do it? We do it annually. We do it once a year. We do it in February. We try to do it when the weather's right for these kids because, you know, a lot of these kids are, like I said, they got a lot of medical issues going on. Um, we had 13 kids here yesterday, and, I mean, I, I, I can't even tell you, like, every year we have kids that, that drop out a week, two, three days before the hunt because, you know, they have medical issues. If, if their blood counts are down and they got cancer, they can't come out here and be around all this. You know, so there's, there's a lot of circumstances with these kids that if, if they're not feeling well, We've had kids make it halfway here and turn around and go home because they're feeling bad, you know, and, and they just can't run the risk of getting sick. So they, they just, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a different life that we're not used to. <clears throat> so, uh, so as you guys do this year in and year out, he's the looks. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> now we got the man in charge. Tell me, what do you think when you do this each and every day, what's, what's your experience like? Is it fulfilling or is this a, a normal day to you? When you do the annually, it's once a year. Do you get riled up for it, excited for it, or you're just like, ah, okay? We definitely get wild up about it. It's a, uh, it's life changing. Like Gene said earlier, um, you get with these kids out here. It's something that we do every day or on the weekends or whatever. But it's just not the same when you get these handicapped kids out here and take them hunting. It's all. So the, it's the childlike joy exists in everybody once they actually accomplish. But when they're out there and they're afraid, how do you keep them comfortable? Because these are all different types of personalities, all different types of illnesses. We, I mean, we hold them whatever we can do to keep them safe. I mean, if we tell them, hey, if, you, if you're not comfortable doing this, we'll go back to the buggy. If whatever, it's this stage for you. Whatever you want to do, you know, we'll do whatever you want to do. It's and do you have the same kids coming each and every year, or is it just a different group every year? It's a, we try to do a different group every year. We have a few ambassadors for the kids outdoors that are normally here two, three times, and then we switch the ambassador or whatnot, but most of the time we try to get a different group of kids. For the kids and the parents, how much does it generally cost to, to go through? All free? It's all free. Um, the kids that come in from out of state, we they're put up in a hotel here right down the road. Um, it's all paid for from kids outdoors, from fundraisers or whatever, that we can make money for it. So it's, it's, it's a big community about supporting the kids, and it's, it's free for them. How do, they, how do you go about signing up for it? The website's Kids Outdoors. They can go on there and uh, fill out the uh, application to get on. Um, disability, if they got, like Gene said, dream hunts, they can say, I want to hunt this type of animal or this type of animal, and they try to make it happen. So how, how do you guys market that? Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of kids that would love to have this experience, but they just don't know about it. I know a couple of artistic kids that would love to have this experience. They're really the most happiest kids I you, you can be around. My kid has ups and flows. He go up and down. But normally artistic kids only are happy. Like They don't see what we typically see and deal with what we typically deal with. How do they go about finding out about this? That's been a challenge of ours too, just trying to get it out there and get the kids. I mean, we, like we said, we're start of just kind of getting up and going with our chapter full time. Um, but it, it, it's been difficult, but as we've opened our horizons, we've seen there's different ways of getting kids. We've tied in with some different groups that have disabled kids. Do you guys have any blowback from, you know, bringing special needs kids out here? Like, you know, uh, as from activity, negativity uh, attached to it. Religion in, in general, believe it or not, I love to say this in all honesty. When you look at the world, you don't see religion. You don't see God. You see what America wants you to see, what they the government wants you to see. Something. Yeah, you you see America's version of religion. Yes, here you guys see your version of how God touches us. Do you get any blowback from that? Any negative? absolutely. Peta hates us. Peta absolutely hates us. They hate anybody causing any kind of harm to an animal. But at the end of the day, what a lot of the people don't understand, and and you know, kind of to our our sidebar conversation earlier before we started this, you know, a lot of these Peta people. They're they're sitting in a what I call a, a you know a their their subdivision palace and and they're they're talking trash about something online they don't know and and I guarantee you anybody with PETA if you go into their house where they live they've displaced armadillos they've displaced raccoons they've displaced all kinds of insects they've displaced native forage and grasslands um, squirrels birds deer hogs turkeys the whole deal and then they're mad at us for killing these animals well we're doing the same thing. 
we got a ranch here. We're trying to manage these hogs off this ranch. This guy raises cattle on this ranch, and that's what makes his living. These hogs are out here flipping this grass upside down and killing it. His cows ain't got nothing to eat. These hogs have to be managed, not to mention what a lot of people with PETA don't realize is hog is not a native species to Florida. Hogs was brought here in 1521 by Ponce de Leon and dropped off here. Hogs eat native birds. They eat their eggs. They eat snakes. They, eat, they are the most destructive thing in the state of Florida. And they cause, they cause over a billion dollars worth of damage in the state of Florida every year just on, on rooting, you know, um, causing erosion on the sides of the roads and hills and, and different, you know, like uh, retention ponds. They're, they're super destructive. They carry a lot of disease. They can transfer disease to livestock. If you don't keep a handle on hogs, hogs will ruin the state of Florida. If, and, and a lot of people, they get in their feelings about it. They see us at the store with a hog in the trailer or something. We're coming to and from hunting, and they got something to say. But they don't realize that subdivision they're living in, there was hogs living there before they were there. And, you know, I feel like everybody kind of wants to get on their soapbox about everything. And, and I'm of the opinion, like, look, live and let live. I don't come complain about your subdivision. Don't complain about what we do over here in these woods. Mind your business and I'll mind mine. And, and a lot of people's gotten away from that. And I think the, the Internet in general, you know, everybody can get on there and be a keyboard warrior. And we've got away from somebody getting punched in the mouth if they got something slick to say. And I think we've gotten a long ways away from that. I mean, this is no, no longer that time when people would handle things with fist cup anymore. We would love that to happen. I think that would resolve a lot of our issues if people Tell actually me. took things out back and handled them in those manners. But you don't have that. How do you defend yourself? I don't. I don't even play into it, man. I mean, I, you know, I just move on about my life. I'm not, it's not going to benefit me any by arguing with some idiot on the internet. I mean, we got kids to take hunting. We got things to do, you know. I got a full-time job. We hog hunt. We coach football. We go to church. We got, we rodeo. I mean, we do this with the kids. I mean, I don't have time to be arguing with an idiot. I'm going to move on about my day. You don't, you don't let nothing stop the progression of what you have going forward. Nah. I mean, that's that's the smart way of looking at it. If it had to be resolved in another direction, what would you take? How would you handle it? Well, if someone that, came to you in person, not a person, not like not when you're getting ready to take it in to a different direction, organization wise. So I mean, organizationally, right? And it, this all ties back into kids outdoors. Eight years ago, before we started doing this, I was a different person. This changed me a lot. Um, and, and back then, you know, I probably would have played into it. I probably would have tried to fight somebody. I probably would have tried to, you know, escalate it or whatever. But now, man, I mean, look, we have to handle ourselves differently. I've been changed by these kids as much as I hope we change these kids. And at the end of the day, man, all I can do is pray for somebody. And I, I try not to play into it, and I try to just pray for people and move on. And I'm going to let the Lord handle it, man, because, you know, he tells us don't, don't worry about our battles and, and don't return evil for evil, return good for evil. And, and that's all I can do, man. And I just I try to live my life that way, and I'm not always good at it. I'm not perfect, and I'm not sitting up here trying to be a preacher and tell you guys I'm perfect. And my wife will vouch for that. <laughs> I mean, that's perfectly fine. I want to get to the point where, like, this is a great thing to have. If you went into a school, have you guys ever just gone school to school and, and talked about this? Um, no, I mean, typically, it, it's A, it's really hard to get into a school. As you know, I mean, I, it's hard to get in to pick your kids up when you're on the list to get them out. Um, I mean, we, we, the majority of what we do to try to get the word out is, is social media. Um, and, and we do pretty decent with that. Um, obviously, I, I, we kind of hang out in the woods. I'm not real great with social media. I'm not real. I mean, I talk all right. You know what I mean? So if, if I see somebody face to face, I can, I can really convey that passion. And nine times out of 10, I can get somebody on board to help us with whatever we need help with. And that's kind of what I do with this. You know, I'm kind of like the face of it because I talk a little better than some of these guys, but it, it's just the gift God gave me. You know what I mean? I got the gift of gab. I can talk to people. So that's kind of what I do for this thing. Tell me how big. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. How big is this place? This place is about 1,250 acres. Um, and out of all 1,250 acres, how many acres do you guys actually use? We hunt it all, every bit of it, fence to fence. Fence to fence. Fence Everything to fence. Everything here is up for the taking. Absolutely. I like that. I Absolutely. like that. You maximize what you have here. Now, I feel like we're going away from that here in Florida. Obviously, you see all the subdivisions being built up and so on and so forth. How can we continue to keep this going? How do we preserve this? You can't, man. Um, I mean, look, at, honestly, I mean, the state's doing what they can to preserve it. They're buying large tracks that, that kind of help preserve the watershed and uh, the flow of water in Florida and that type stuff. But you're not going to stop it. There's too much money involved. There's too much money in development. There's too much money in people, you know, retired people moving down from up north. Um, you know, broke people don't move here, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's, you're not going to stop it. There's too much money in it. I mean, for us, it's, it's really sad because I, 
you know, my little boy, he's growing up out here, and Tommy's little boy, and Thor's girls, and, and all our kids are growing up out here, but I don't know that their grandkids will ever see this. And, I mean, our way of life is, is dying. I mean, the, the Florida cracker cowboy, the, the, the Florida farmer, um, Florida hog hunters, you know, Florida dog men in general. You know, we're dog men. We, we run deer dogs. We run hog dogs. We, we run coon dogs. We run cow dogs. I mean, we, anything you can do with a dog, we, we kind of do it, and, and we've been raised up to do it that way. That's the way the pioneers did it here. You had to have a good dog in this part of the country to survive. And, and that's what we're trying to preserve. And, but, you know, all our people and a lot of people from Okeechobee all the way up this way, they're all moving like South Alabama, South Georgia. Everybody's getting out of here. We're tired of the traffic. We're tired of being crowded in. I mean, it's even the roads, the way they're building it. You try to pull a 20 foot gooseneck around this town. You, you can't hardly turn. I mean, they don't build the roads like they used to for these trailers and stuff. I mean, our way of life, hauling equipment, hauling hay, hauling cows, hauling these buggies and side by sides. You can't get in and out of stores. You can't get in and out of anywhere. I mean, so the the only thing I feel like the the next thing to do is to actually move to an area where you can, like you just said, everyone's leaving. Yeah, I don't want that to be the option, but if that's the only option, where do you go? It's once you break the seal, man, you can't stop it. You know what I mean? And it's once they put the first subdivision here, it's over. It's it's everything's leaving. It's going to continue. You know what I mean? So I I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the answer is other than like I said, if you don't like it, leave it. I think this will, the, what you guys are doing is so big that they will keep this going. It's more than doing it just annually. Obviously, you guys do this day in and day out. I only hear about one rodeo, rodeo here. I think it's called, not supposed to be, River Ranch. Yeah. It's, if it's, I think it's River Ranch. That's the only rodeo I ever hear about. And they have a lot. Oh, there's a lot of rodeos. Yeah? A lot of rodeos in the state of Florida. Last weekend, the Polk County Cattlemen's Association had their annual rodeo in Bartow. Uh, Silver Spurs had a big one the same night. Over in Kissimmee, uh, there's a lot of local rodeos, um, little jackpots, that type stuff. I know that there's, there's a rodeo right next to Bartow High School. But I'm saying in this general area, I only hear about that one rodeo. And they have like a rodeo show every Friday and Saturday night. I was just telling Ash about that what yesterday. Like, oh, yeah, I go to the rodeo all the time. She's like, you know, there's no rodeo near you. I was like, yes, it is. That's all we have in this small town is yeah. a rodeo. That's how you stay grounded with the people here. I feel like, I mean, you just said it. I, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. We'll, we'll hear that. How do you, how do you... So I, I see it on both sides. Um, I run a large fabrication shop, so I need, I need craftsmen that, that work with their hands every day. We can't find them. Um, we can hire, you know, 27 helpers or, you know, we get a bunch of guys that apply for a fitters and they have nothing, nothing for experience other than working at a fast food restaurant or, or a gamer. And, you know, I think the more this goes on, like this plays back to, um, this plays back to our kids as well. I spoke on this at our fundraiser dinner a few weeks ago. Um, you know, my kids and their kids, all our kids in general, they're, they're different than most kids. Um, they're raised up different. We treat these kids like adults for the most part. Our kids will go get on one of these side-by-sides and hook up to this hog trailer and load dogs and have collars on them and be waiting on me when I get home to go hog hunting. I mean, no, no, don't get it twisted. In my family, you, had a, you, you, get a, you get your first gun at nine, yeah. and that's when you start hunting. But I know that tradition. I can tell you about my son's mom. Y'all like, wait you know, till nine? We were, you're supposed to you're supposed to get it at six, but you can't shoot it until nine. Like you got it, you can play around with. You get a rifle. You're not gonna actually use it. Now we start out with a BB gun, and then, then we'll move him up to a 22, and then like Easton, he's nine. Um, last year he got a 243 youth model. That was his first rifle, and he bought it with his own money. So you know that's what he wanted. But to my point um, earlier, you know what what I was saying with these kids being different. Um, just a little story I told at the at the uh, fundraiser dinner. You know, we, I took my kids to Lowe's uh, several months back. We had to get some lumber and stuff, whatever. And Easton, you know, he, he wears his belt buckle on his boots. Josie, same way. They, they got their belt buckles they want at rodeos or the pig show or whatever. And, you know, Easton's got a pocket knife he carries on his hip. And, and we go into Lowe's, and they're grabbing a flat cart, and they're looking at lumber and checking it for straightness. He's like, Dad, that one's got a knot in it. We don't need it. And everybody's looking at my kids like they're weird. Like, we're a sideshow in there because my kids are being respectful, helpful, and they're acting like they're older than they are. And then this one dude at the counter said something. He's like, man, you let him tote a knife? And I was like, yeah, why? And he's like, you trust him with that? I said, I trust him more than I would most adults. And he kind of looked at me funny. And standing beside him as a 12-year-old in a pair of Crocs with all them things stuck in the top of them, a pair of pajama pants, got on a Pokemon shirt, and he ain't looked up from his phone in 35 minutes. He's walking through the store, never, never once made eye contact with an adult. And I spoke to him, and he didn't, even he didn't say anything to me. And I'm sitting here thinking, why is my kids weird when you got a kid standing there that won't even speak to an adult is disrespectful, in my opinion. And but my kids are weird. And and that's what we're that's what we're promoting and breeding these days. 
you know, for lack of a better term, with these kids. We're, we're promoting that, hey, stick a tablet in their hand and let that babysit them so I can go live my best life and do what I want to do instead of being the parent that God intended you to be. And I'm not good with that, man. Like, I'm going to make sure my kids understand what hard work, respect, values, and I'm not the perfect father, and I'm not sitting here trying to be that. But I try my guts out every day, and every one of these guys do with their kids, and I see it, and that's the best thing about this deal is when these handicapped kids show up, they see that, and they see our kids, and they see how they act, and they see that we're, we're not just being inconvenienced by these kids being here that day. We're happy to have them, and we're going to do everything in our power to make them have the best day they can have. And, I mean, you see guys running around here like, man, what are you in a hurry for? He's like, that kid said he needed a Diet Coke, and there's one down there at the barn, and I'm running down there to get it. You know, just the little things like that, man. These guys bust their butts and go out of their way to get everything these kids won't need that day. And, and the same for the parents. You know, they show up. These, these people are on, on 24-7, 365 taking care of these kids. Like, let us take care of them for the day. You take a break. You got them all the time. Let us take care of your kids today. Monitor it. Help us out. You know what I mean? They're with them the whole day. They're right beside them. No matter what we do, the, the parents are with them. But... You know, let us help you. Let us give you a break. I mean, I, I feel like you guys are raising kids the right way, and, and that that's homage to what you guys are actually doing here. Because most kids these days, and my kid is no, is not exempt from this. He loves playing video games. I don't really knock him for it. I, I feel like that's a healthy distraction. I'd much rather you do that than be, you know, running rec reckless around the house. But at the same time, you have the real outlet, the real connection with people. Uh, that day and age, is, is kind of being diminished because everybody is so socially connected at all times. We we don't never really unplug. I grew up with a house phone. There was no cell phone. You yeah. didn't call us. If I was out, I was out. I had a when prime I, code. Remember the prime codes in high school? Yeah. <laughs> See, that, that's taking it all the way back right there. That's when you actually cared about your neighbor. Now it's more so me, 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 me. Absolutely. How do you establish that in this next generation with your kids? I see that. You're just, it's trickling down. But is it going off into their kids? Are, you, are your kids branching off with other kids to have like-minded? Like, it's no, hard it, to have It that. 100% rubs off. And I'll tell you how I know this. Um, there's some kids. I, I coach football for my son. Um, me and my brother-in-law's coach baseball and football for my nephew. Um, we've coached all the way up. And now, you know, he's coaching softball with his daughter, and I'm coaching football with my son. And, uh, you know, we, we get into these kids. We see these kids every year with this – with these groups and, and these different leagues and stuff, and, and they, they recognize that difference in us and our kids. And, they're, and they always, hey, can we come home with y'all? When can we come over and stay? And it's like we always have kids at our house over the weekend, and, like, the first thing I'll tell their parents before they leave, like, hey, listen, kids are going to mind at our house. Okay, well, if you got a problem with him, just let me know. No, I don't need to let you know. We're going to jerk him up. We're going to bust his butt if he needs it, and everybody's good with it. And they'll, like, I've had, my wife will tell you, I've had coaches threatening their kids, like, hey, I'm going to call Coach Gene. What is that, man? Like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you want me to discipline your child? Like, and, and when they come to our house, they're different. They act different. They, they handle themselves different. They're respectful for the most part, you know. So that tells me they're capable of doing it. It's just not being enforced at their house. I mean, I believe the, the typical American, and I don't care what you guys think about it, is fearful. They're a, afraid of everything. I'm afraid the government's going to come here and tell me how to raise my kids and tell me this, that, and the third. You don't have that fear. You have, like, a, a lawless mentality. I'm going to do the best that I possibly can. How do you have that mentality going in without being concerned about what people think? I guess it's just living the life we were blessed to grow up in. And I mean, living and doing the things we've done. I mean, it's just, that's been always the way it's been for me. You know, I mean, like my parents didn't tolerate no crap and that was the way we were going to live. And, and, you know, that's the way I raised my kids. Like, look, man, right's right and wrong's wrong. And you're going to do the right thing even when it sucks. And, and that's the way we try to raise them. And, I mean, I, like I said, I'm not sitting here trying to act like I'm the perfect father, man. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like us as a whole and us as a group, we're probably trying a lot harder than a lot of other people because we don't spend Saturday night in the club. We spend Saturday night at the ranch with the kids. And most of the time, you know, if, if our kids ain't welcome, we're not going. I mean, it's, it's the, pretty much a, a staple for us, man. Wherever we're going, whatever we're doing, them kids are coming with us. I like that. I like that. I like that mentality as well. Now, now one segment we like to say here with Two Dimes and Token is tell me about a bad decision here that ended up being something that was monumental, that changed everything here. A bad decision was a fundraiser dinner. <laughs> 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 so we, we stopped doing the fundraiser dinner. We, when we took over Kids Outdoors two years ago, like I said, another guy locally had it and ran it for about four years. 
Um, we didn't, and he did a fundraiser dinner every Friday night before the kids hunt. And then we would take the kids the next day. And then we did just the hunt for two years and we kind of funded it on our own, out of our own pockets amongst everybody here type deal. And uh, it kind of got to be a lot on us. So my wife, which is typically the one kind of telling me not to do it, she's like, I think we should do the fundraiser dinner again. Okay, let's go. Like I'm always in for a good idea. I know it's gonna be a lot of work, but let's go. So we start planning this fundraiser dinner and we had no idea what we were getting into. I mean, I'd helped with the one before, but as far as the paperwork, the donations, um, we sold corporate tables. Um, we had to get all the raffle items. Um, we raffled off a bunch of guns, um, all kind of stuff. And it was just like, man, by the time we got set up down there last year for our first event as a core group here, um, we were at each other's throats, man. And, I, and it's like, I had to really stop and back up and, and it was one of them things like, you know, everybody's mad at everybody and what are we mad for? We're mad because I'm trying to do the same thing you're trying to do just in a different way. And we were all trying to get to the finish line, but everybody was at each other's throats and I, I had to really just stop and kind of call some people and talk to some people and say, hey, look, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing here. I know we're disagreeing right now, but I know your head's in the right place and I know your heart's in the right place and mine is too. We're just trying to go at it a different way. So we had to really kind of stop and just kind of relook at things and say, hey, we got to remember we're trying to put funds together here to be able to take more kids. Outside of this, we all love each other. We all hang out. But right now we're ready to kill each other. So everybody go to separate ways and let's do something productive. And we'll come back and we'll get these kids some money raised and we'll go do our own thing. So, you know, it, it worked out really good. Last year we did about $60,000 for the kids. Um, this year we, we had a lot of notes. Um, we, we, get, we changed a lot of things and tried to make it roll a little smoother. So um, we, we still had some setbacks or whatever. And, uh, but I mean, it, it turned out really good this year. We did about $80,000 for these kids. So, I mean, that's, that's impressive. Uh, obviously you, you started off a little rough, rough, but you got it together. How about yourself? One of the things I've seen, we got into this and we were going to bring kids hunting and we'd bring, we, we always said that, you know, these kids aren't different. They're, they just want to be like us and go hunting. So we get out here and we had wheelchairs that we load up five, six, eight kids on a swamp buggy. Well, now we got these wheelchairs sitting there like, how are we going to get this wheelchair to be like the rest of these kids? They're like, well, we can't get up there. You know, the, the, they were just thinking that's, that's how it's going to happen. I, I can't be like the rest. <clears throat> so we all come together and Gene and Thor and the whole group and get this wheelchair or wheelchair lift designed on the back of a swamp buggy. But we put this thing together, and it was a catapult. We said, hey, there ain't no way we could put a kid on this thing because we're going to sling him over the front of the, <laughs> the swamp buggy when we get him up there. And we kept working and working and working. And finally, we, we said, hey, I think we got this thing right. And we brought it out to the first hunt last year, and part, it was parked over here. And we had a young lady in a wheelchair come over, and we said, hey, you know how you— Was it the year before? Was it the year before? No, 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 just make sure mentioned it was the one the year before that didn't get to yeah on the yeah so the year before she didn't get to ride on the buddy <laughs> actually it's a funny story her dad put her in a trailer to bring her to the hunt and when he closed the doors and then closed trailer he forgot to know it was going to be really dark in there on her she said it was it wasn't fun but we made it and uh so we pull up last year and we get ready to go hunt and you know she's thinking you know i'm gonna have to get back in my truck and go wherever we're going like she always has and we bring her around there we said gracie what do you think about us putting you up on that swamp buggy? And she, she was in tears. After all the work, we finally got probably one of the only swamp buggies in Florida that I've seen that you can put a wheelchair up on the deck and take somebody hunting like the rest of the kids. They're no different. I mean, that, that's, that's amazing in itself. And it didn't kind of catapult her at all? No, uh, no. We uh, had all the kinks worked out by then. Gotcha, gotcha. Anybody tested out? that? that oh, yeah. A, a bunch of us. <laughs> 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 I was one of the first catapulters. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's good. If you're gonna put anybody on it, you might as well try it first. Uh, that's right. So that, that's, that ended up being, you know, a good experience. And now you guys have it moving forward. And she's now, you know, you you changed her life when it comes to actually being playing a part in this. Because normally she's on the sideline. Not just in. her life, but we, all these kids. You know, we don't look at any of them any different. This section of the podcast, unfortunately, was a little bit scrambled due to the outside nature. We had a lot of wind that kind of came through and it really blurred the next segment. But what happened is we transitioned into, after explaining how these kids that were at these camps changed these guys' lives, they also uh, started getting into how their own children help. And this is actually where they pick up. 
So the the funny part about that is, like, Jeffrey is like Tommy 2.0, and Easton is like Gene 2.0. <laughs> They're both like act like us, walk like us, talk like us, the whole deal. And like them two are like cohorting now. Like, hey, we're we're gonna take this over. Like when when dads, you know, get older, we're we're gonna we're gonna take this over. I mean, that's that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, they're in there writing notes. We're having board meetings, and there he's like, I got my notepad, Dad. I got to get some notes about kids outdoors. I'm like, listen, listen, that's that's that's, a, uh, that's it's in good hands. As long as you guys keep going, obviously they got the work ethic. Most kids don't even have that, so that that says a lot. Here's the thing, man. I mean, for me, like I've I've thought about this a lot, and uh, I mean, like it's not like I can personally do much about it, but it's. Once, once we came in as as a as pioneers or settlers or whatever, once we came in and we stepped into that ecosystem and we started taking from the land and we started using the land and we started modifying the land, it's never going back. Once you disturb that natural ecosystem, and don't get me wrong, like this ranch here, once you get a, a sub ecosystem established like here, I mean, there's game that lives within here and thrives. Um, they got feeders running that type stuff, you know, to help the game out or whatever. And you can have like sub ecosystems, but it's as far as like the waterways and everything and the problems we're having in Okeechobee with the with the you know the bloom of the algae and all that and these big fish kills and everything it, it's it's all due to development and it's all due to us manipulating the land um all the fertilizers all the septic tanks everything runs to that waterway um and it's all going downstream and Okeechobee's the end of the stream you know you it's at the end of the day it's a septic tank for Florida because everything from Ocala all the way down flows to Okeechobee and, and all the pesticides, all the herbicides, all the fertilizer, and every one of these beautiful Floritan lawns you drive through these neighborhoods, all that's getting there somehow, some way. Leaching into the ground, going to the aquifer, coming up, you know, whatever. Getting into streams, getting into spillways, that type of stuff. It's once you start manipulating and, and molesting this land, it's not going back. I mean, but it's a way that we can crop this land in order to keep this land pure as possible. I believe when I asked you guys a question about how do you network, it's, uh, it, it, this hasn't been marketed to where everybody can have this at their disclosure. I live 10 minutes away from here. Never heard of it. Yeah. It's so crazy. And I, I cycle everywhere around this place. Cherry Pocket, you name it. That's where I'm, I like to go. This is where nature exists. Obviously, they're building up around here, so you always see more and more developments happening. But in that mindset, if you had this to where everyone knew this was here, how can they come and, you know, embark on this? How can someone... You can't. I mean, this is a privately owned ranch. I mean, you don't get in here unless you know the owner have permission. I mean, this is not this is not Disneyland. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, a lot of people that move down here, they, they kind of have that mentality, like, this is a theme park. I mean, this is this is for a guy that has been very successful in business and had the had the smarts about him and had the funds to purchase this ranch, and this is for his friends and family down here. And, um, you know, we happen to know him, and, and he... He extended himself out and, and offered for us to do this kids hunt here, which has been a phenomenal blessing for us. We're extremely proud, so we, we try to do our best to come out here. We support a kids hunt. We come out here. We trim roads. We fix roads with the tractors. Um, you know, we'll work on fence. Well, anything he needs done out here, we're, we're willing to do to help him in exchange for him letting us do this hunt here to kind of pay forward, you know, our thanks to him for allowing us to do it here. And, I mean, this and there's, there's places like this scattered all over the state of Florida, but these, these people that own these places and the cattlemen of Florida, they don't want the publicity. They don't want the credit. They want to quietly manage their ranch on their piece and feed their family. And that's it. They don't they don't want to be in the limelight. And I feel like the Cattlemen's Association, they do a good job for stepping up and speaking up for the Florida cattlemen because they're, they're humble people. They're not going to, unless you bring trouble to their door, they're not going to speak up and tell you, hey, man, you're, you, know, you need to stop doing this. They're, they're not a noisy group, man. They're going to put their heads down and go to work. And, and that's kind of how they are. So, I mean. Like I said, unless you bring trouble to their door, they ain't looking for it, man. They're just going to put their heads down and raise their family, raise their cattle. Right now, now this is a question for you. <clears throat> I, I, I want this to just be broad as possible. What's a day in the life of a real cowboy? I mean, because we got the wash water on Yellowstone that makes it seem like a cowboy is what you see on TV. Yeah, I'm just letting you know. When you think about cowboy, you think about the American style right here. You, you, yeah. It's what you want to know. A day in the life of a real cowboy. Tell me what it's like. What it's like. Oh, it's peaceful. Um, I never woke up a 
a day in my life hating what I did. I always enjoyed it. You know, I've, I've worked on probably two of the biggest ranches in the state of Florida. And, uh, you know, in the morning you, you get up, <clears throat> you, go down the, you go to the barn and you feed your horses, you hook the trailer up, and you and a couple other guys will load all your horses on the trailer and kind of the riding foreman will tell you, hey, you know, we're going to go gather this pasture today. We'll push these cows over here or, you know, push them up into a crevice. We're going to start working them next week or whatever it may be, fixing fence, you know. Some of them bigger ranches, you, you ride you ride your horse almost five days a week and certain times of the year, you know, you, uh, there's not a lot of cow work to be done. And we, mowing pastures and fixing fence and, and getting your cow pens ready for next year or whatever it may be but it's just a it's a real peaceful life and you know you're working with dogs and breaking horses and you know, getting them ready for the next year it's just it's a continuing process you go through and uh <clears throat> most places i've lived and you know it's don't pay a lot you know, the, the work's very rewarding, and I wish I could go back and do it do it again tomorrow, you know. I mean, it, it seems like it's you, you stay even keel all day long. There's no real excitement to it outside of the norm, like something breaking out of the norm. Well, you know, some of it's just, some a lot of it's hard work, you know. It's <laughs> not all of it's fun, but, you know, but like, you know, I grew up roping. My, my dad taught me how to rope, and. My dad's worked on, he managed the, the Rayford up there and where the state prison is. And I grew up around inmates, you know, working cattle when I was a wee little thing. And, and I've just been around it ever since. That's where I learned to ride a horse. And I've been in agriculture all my life. And I, uh, you know, the excitement for me was is when, you know, we'd get in, get in a big, a bunch, big old bunch of cows or something, and one or two of them run off, and they'd be like, catch him. So I'm like, heck yeah, bud. I'm all about it. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I'm saying. It has to be a part of the day where it's like, all right, the mundane changes. Yeah. Going to go catch their horses. I mean, that, that cow is with, where yeah. fun comes in. Yeah, well, we run a couple of group of cows. There's a few wild ones in there, and he runs off them. I'm not an office person at all. <laughs> so not a day, not a day, a couple uh, hours. I uh, I work for an industrial mechanical company now, and I'm a superintendent for them. So I, there's I've had to come to the you know the ways of life and uh, be in the office here and there, but I try to stay out of as much as possible. So. But obviously, it's not that bad. It's not that not that far fetched from you. you I couldn't I couldn't afford to live on the cowboy wages no more. So no, <laughs> no. I mean, the, the suit and tie is a little. No, bad. So I don't own a tie and I don't own a suit. No, I don't even own khaki pants. <laughs> well, I mean that that's, that says a lot. That, that that doesn't happen. I mean, you obviously you guys got married. You wore a suit and tie that day. No, I wore jeans that day. Real cowboy. I'm, I'm I'm with you. Boots yeah. or slacks? Yeah. No, I, I wear boots. I don't wear no slacks. Uh-uh. I wear jeans and boots all day long. When I was when I was working on a ranch every day, yes, no sir. It must be simple life. <coughs> that 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 right there is. You're not really thinking about fashion. You're thinking about no. You're worried about comfort. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see these gators. That, that's a, that's oh yeah. A, that's got to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. A little uncomfortable. No, no, it's comfortable to me. <laughs> they haven't done much in a while, but then again, hey man, I was born and raised in Gainesville, Florida, and I'm I'm true to my roots. Ah, Gainesville is a little country. I've been out there a couple times, Ocala, all those things. Yeah. You only have the university. Everything else is just country. Yeah, it's grown up quite a bit from when I was, but uh. Would you ever go back? No. No, absolutely not. Florida, I mean, Florida is the game where, <laughs> where they are. It's amazing. Beautiful place to be. 
Yeah, it's uh, certain parts of it are. I don't see it. I mean, I see it changing kind of like how this changes, where you have more people being moving. Just everyone's moving to Florida. It's it's uh, the primal destination. Yeah, it's just like it seems like the major cities just keep growing, growing out, and growing out. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So what we like to say here is uh, the spice of the week. What made your week a little bit better this week? What happened this week that you like, man, this is a good week? For me, uh, yesterday my son had a football game. He caught a pick six, took it to the house, Yeah. and he started. I normally tell him don't, don't celebrate, but his son loves doing the gritty. So in homage to his son, his, he, he, he loves the gritty. So he did the gritty. I was just excited to see him practice something and do it, execute. No, I don't speak a lot of that lingo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mike, go, go, go ahead, show him the gritty. There you go. They know, they know what the gritty is. Even in the country, you know what the gritty is. Yes. I, obviously. I know. Hey, man, I'm sorry, but yeah, like you've never seen that before. Yeah, can, that, can that you show one's over my head. What the gritty is? One more time. <laughs> Where'd you learn that at? <laughs> School, exactly. <laughs> but I was like, he ain't never. Right. You, have you played Fortnite? <clears throat> <laughs> I love that stern face. Yeah. We'll go into that. So yesterday was the, the reward. All the hard work that you put in actually came, and it was worth it. Yeah, I mean, I, I I go through this, and you know, I've I've been planning my week out around everything we do here this Saturday, and I mean, I've been putting lights on our trailers and lights on our side by sides, and just all kinds of prep work that goes into this thing, and um, <clears throat> just the. Just the reward you get from, you know. So yesterday, major spice of the week, helping those kids feel yeah. better about themselves. How about you? <clears throat> I'm not much different than Thor. You know, you come out here and you could have a rough week and you see you really don't have it all that rough to see what some of these kids go through. That's why we just try to make the day <coughs> for them. You know, they don't get to see a lot of things that we can help them see or do whatever they want to do we try to make it happen is there anything that happened yesterday you was like man that, that's that's what this is all about oh 100 percent. i mean you got kids that when they when they make the hunt happen it you know they at that moment they're the only ones here you know they they scream they enjoy not not in mad or whatever it's just and it, it it really sends chills down your i mean you can feel it in your backbone it'll it'll send a chill down your back i mean you guys make me want to have my son sign up to do this just get get, get down and dirty for the first time in your life i i hate to say it but you know get down there actually do what a, a a man's supposed to do you're actually supposed to put in a hard day's work and, and feel the results from it you provide all day long but this right here is the core of what Florida was all about. And you guys are still holding on to tradition. So that said, I feel like I hope and I pray that you guys keep doing this. Don't ever be uh, distracted by what's going on out there. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. I love it. I love the mere fact that you guys are helping kids that don't have the opportunity to have those experiences and giving them those experiences. So, gotcha. No, 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 Thor is, is very, very, bring the kids in. Go ahead. Now you got to tell me, what was the, the, the best part of yesterday that made it all about? Man, not to, not that yesterday wasn't great with, with the kids, um, to piggyback off of what, you know, Thor and Tommy said, I mean, yesterday was great, but, um, man, it just, it's, it's so, to me, the kids are, the kids are the best part of this deal, hands down, but seeing how they affect the guides is probably better for me than it is the kids it's you're going to get that reaction from them every year they're going to be blown away they're going to they're going to get emotional you're going to get emotional like it always touches you but to me to see these guys that i grew up with because hog hunters in general man we're kind of we're kind of like a got a reputation of being kind of rough and tumble bunch and uh to see these big rough and tumble hog hunters that 
that don't cry, that don't hurt, that don't, you know, that are just tough dudes in general, to see these kids breaking these guys down and seeing the change in these guys and, and seeing it change their lives, that, that's 100% the best part for me. You guys are riding the wave a, a high that you can't, you can't duplicate. You can't yeah. do it. You won't happen again until next year. So what do you look forward to for these guys that they can have that same experience? Man, we do this every weekend with them. I mean, we, we hog hunt at least once a week most of the time. Um, you know, we fish, we deer hunt, you know, we, we work cows. I mean, we, we're always doing something with these kids. So for us, man, it's, it's a daily deal. You know what I mean? Like I get home from work and he's already got my afternoon planned out. He's like, dad, if I load the dogs right now, we can be home before I got to be to bed at eight 30. You know, he's, he's got something planned out. He's ready to go. Hey, let's go check on the cows. Hey, let's run down to the pond, catch some fish. I mean, it's, it's every day for us, man. I mean, this is just kind of how we live. And I mean, I, I don't, I don't ever want to take it for granted. You know what I mean? How blessed we are. And, uh, you know, to, to be able to live the life we live and do what we do. And, I mean, just sharing it with these kids just makes it that much better for us. Yeah. Tell me, what is it like for you? It's just really fun when we're, when we're at home, but it's still really fun here to help these kids out to go hog hunting because this is some of their favorite dreams to go hog hunting that they think they can't do, but they actually can. And we got some guides that can really do it for them. Like, they help a lot. How much do you? I help a, pretty much a lot, and yep. I help with the fishing a lot in in the middle of the day, and um, and I help drag the hogs out after they kill them, and then and then after that, he pretty much does all the work after that. But he, he's your partner in crime. What's the best part of it? Probably seeing them killing the hogs. Yeah. Seeing the big smile come onto their face. What about you? What's your best part outside of them having that? What's your best part? Um, catching the hog, catching the fish. What? catching the fish and helping the kids, especially helping the kids others. that most need it. Helping others. Want to be just like your dad? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, for any dad listening, that's all we really want. What can your dad do better? Um, he's not afraid as much as me. You don't think your dad's afraid? No, not of anything. Not of anything? I mean, he's he's caught 400-pound hogs, and he's went in there. Like, it's nothing. Have you ever done it? No. I'm scared to grab a two-pound hog. <laughs> How are you going to face your... I'm just going to do it. You got to do it sometimes. got to do it sometimes? Yep. So, uh, next year? Yeah. Next year's event? Next year. Hold you to it. Now. Dad's watching. Yep. You can't be scared next year. What about you? Get a hog? No. Oh, no? hopping right in there? Getting after it? Yes, sir. Have you ever been scared? Yes, sir. Face your feet? Going? Yes, sir. What is, what's your hat say? Native Boys TV. Where does that come from? Uh, Native Boys. <laughs> <laughs> is that yesterday's event? Yes, sir. He was here yesterday selling a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I'm and loving the hats. Loving the gear. Tell me, what do you guys want to know about? I want them to know that sometimes we get scared and sometimes we face them and sometimes don't have fears and sometimes do have fears. And I do have big fears sometimes. Yeah? Like I said, it's okay to have fears. What about you? What do you want the people to know? That I like to help others. Yeah? He is just like your dad, repping the Florida. You're a Gator fan as well? Yes, sir. Man. And, and, that's not my Also, dad. Uh -huh. yesterday on one of the hogs that the kid actually got, we they had um it uh it was camp coming after everybody and me and my friend were on top of the roof and my mom was in the buggy and it came running under the like I thought it came up in the buggy. My mom's on the seat and I thought it came up in the buggy. So I'm like freaking out about my mom and I was like <laughs> Jack? Yes. Check your mom? Yes. I mean, that, that, that's the whole goal behind it. Yeah. One thing I want to be up, be when I grow up is a lineman, like my dad. A lineman? A lineman's the, the person that helps, like, keep the power on. And right now, he's actually working out at Williston, and he works five days a week. And I don't get to see him five days, so this is really my time to see him. What about you? 
Take over kids outdoors. Yeah. This is what the head hunter. Yes, sir. I like that. That's it. Wrap up. I would like to. I would like to take over kids outdoors with them too. Yeah. Yep. Partner in crime. Climbing. So dirty yep. here. Be the two boss. Understand that moving forward. Act as such. Bye. How are the kids for happy? <laughs> They're perfectly fine in front of you. Two dimes and a token. <laughs>